Hey guys, it's Amanda. If you're new here, I'm an American living in the UK and I post about my life and experiences living here as well as these weekly reactions requested by all of you. Today, we are going to watch Jasper Carrot as so many of you have mentioned him. I've never seen any of his stand-up, so I'm really looking forward to this. And I just want to say, please keep your recommendations coming. Either put them in the comments or head over to my Instagram and leave them there. I have quite a long list because you guys have given me so many great ideas, but I will get through them. So just keep on giving them to me. Much to my delight, much to my delight, they do exactly the same things in Australia as we do, only much better. <laughs> Australian motor insurance claim form statements. Yeah, the pedestrian had no idea which direction to run, so I ran over him. <laughs> I told the police I was not injured, but on removing my hat, I found I had a fractured skull. <laughs> the bloke was all over the road. I had to swerve a number of times before I hit him. <laughs> I had been driving for 40 years when I fell asleep at the wheel. I saw a slow-moving, sad-faced old gentleman as he bounced off the bonnet of my car. <laughs> I'm not so sure about this one. I saw two kangaroos copulating in the middle of the road. Oh, I hit them, <laughs> causing me to ejaculate through the sunroof. <laughs> That was a good one. Um, I've, got, I've got four kids, as it happens. And um, nothing, nothing prepares you for parenthood. I don't, there, there ought to be a, an A-level in it or something, you know. You can have a go. I think so. Because, I mean, it's just trouble right, right from you. I, re I remember my kid being born. And uh, I, I was in the delivery room, you know. And, and, and I'm not very good with blood. And I told the midwife what she couldn't care less. And... Uh, <laughs> When all the blood started, I just, I just fainted, I just, poof, just went out on the floor. And, and I woke up just in time to see the afterbirth coming out. <laughs> I thought, what an ugly bastard. <laughs> and I heard the midwife say, he looks just like his dad. But nothing prepares you, does it? You know? And uh, my daughter came home last month with a yo-yo, and I think his name was Gavin. <laughs> Six foot three troglodyte with a forehead that kept the rain off his feet. You know? <laughs> he had anchovy tattooed on it because he couldn't spell anarchy. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I always said I would never do what my parents did. No, no, um, you know, none of that punishment, none of that discipline. I would bring my children up liberally, with a capital L. They would know right from wrong instinctively because of the way I had brought them up. I wouldn't have to shout at them, no. I wouldn't have to chastise them, no. There's a pig. <laughs> I do exactly what my parents did, you know. Just the parameters change, that's all, you know. I'm saying to my daughter, oi! Oi, if you're not in by 7am, there will be trouble. <laughs> my mum used to say to me, don't go out without your cap. Don't go out without your cap. I'm saying to my daughter, don't go out without your cap. <laughs> I send my son out with two condoms attached to a piece of string. <laughs> Goes up this sleeve here. Yes, you might look stupid, but it'll save your life. There you go. And then they get to 13. And, 
something happens to the brain, doesn't it? It switches over, and they, they, suddenly they can't speak English. And they, they just grunt at you. Oh, I can't work out. Only no two words, no and wallet. Have you done your own work? No, wallet. <laughs> what do you want money for? I was there in the dark with someone who died. And teenagers in particular, teenagers do not understand irony. They, they do not understand irony. I mean, they are young, they've got all this energy, all this vitality, and what do they do on a bright Saturday afternoon? They spend hours and end in a Burger King, staring out the window going, <laughs> He's sad. <laughs> you try and talk to him, but it's open, isn't it? Hi, everybody, what's happening with the music scene, you know? Oh, I do. Look, I might be over 26, but I can have an intelligent conversation. I want to get to know. Look, I can do things you can't. <laughs> what? <laughs> um. <laughs> I can accept sweets from a stranger. 3 a.m. in the morning, I know the difference between the wardrobe and the lavatory. <laughs> and then you get home and you've got teenagers <laughs> and you've got grandparents. And they're both the same. <laughs> they both hate you. <laughs> Anything to make your life a misery. Turn the music up to 16 million decibels. Neither of them have got a job. <laughs> <laughs> they're both on drugs. <laughs> and they do the same things, but you treat them differently. Grandma comes home, she's had her hair dyed blue. You go, oh, lovely. <laughs> You look ten years younger. <laughs> your daughter comes home with green hair. Get down the hairdressers and wash that shit out of your hair. <laughs> <laughs> I think what's so funny about him is that he's just, he's talking about just normal everyday stuff that people do, like the blue hair. And you wouldn't normally think it was that funny. But his delivery and his facial expressions He's just, he makes ordinary things brilliant. Your kid slides down the banister, you give him a right rollicking. Two weeks later, you're paying out £1,500 for the machine so Grandma can slide up the banister. <laughs> 3 a.m. in the morning, Grandad can't tell the difference between the lavatory and the wardrobe. <laughs> 3 o'clock, they're both in there, pissing on my shoes. It's not funny. <laughs> and you've got to come to terms with the sexual morals of the day. I mean, like, you know, in the 60s, we were, well, we were like nuns compared to them today. I mean, they're like gerbils. And, well, you just, you just keep being amazed. I found, I found some uh, love hearts. You know, do you know those sweets, love hearts? Yeah, if you don't, they're, they're flat sweets shaped like hearts and there's little messages on that you give to your boyfriend and your girlfriend. I had them as a kid, I used to do it, you know. I love you. <laughs> Be mine. <laughs> You're my dream boat. <laughs> I think everybody has given those out at some point in their life. But I thought he was really funny. I'm so glad that I finally got around to watching him. His delivery is brilliant. I know I said it earlier, but it's not just what he's saying, it's how he's saying it. It's his hand gestures, his facial expressions. He's just, he just draws you in. Please let me know any other skits of his that I should watch. And as always, if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel, smash that like button if that's what you're into, and I'll see you in the next video.